It's yummy time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Yum Plays video. We're playing Doki Doki Literature Club. I've never played it before. Uh, I started this on Valentine's Day, or for Valentine's Day. And I kind of waited for things to pop off, but they didn't really. I know this game is supposed to be like kind of scary, maybe, or creepy. But I haven't gotten to that point yet. I think the buildup is really slow so far, but... Uh, when I last ended up, I just kind of hurriedly picked through the words for a new poem. So now we're starting a new day. And we'll see what happens, because everything kind of... I don't know, everything went a little bit crazy with the, all the waifus yesterday. In the game, anyway, so... I'm excited. Okay. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Yami. Yo, Sayori. It looks like you're in a good mood today. Hehehe. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Eh? Why that? All of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its content spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But, there's one more thing. You're always hungry! And so, that only leaves the one option. Ooh, ah! I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. <laughs> her face is in her book as always. Ah! Ah! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Yummy to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah! Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Uh... Ah ha ha! I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You are right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Hee <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Kya! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. <laughs> Sayori glances around. <laughs> Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ha 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 ha! I was just gonna give it to you. But then I realized you blab about- But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. Ha ha ha! Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! 
Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and makes a big takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> Ehehe. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours is really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Eehehe. Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Um. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Ooh-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Mouthful, Sayori trots away to, to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? And Suki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Ha ha ha! I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Hee hee hee. That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Oh my god, am I gonna get scared right now? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, I got freaked out! Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. <laughs> but boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, uh, well... My last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ah ha ha. That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case... I won't let you down, Yummy. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah... Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ha ah, ha ha! Don't worry. I've been practicing pian- uh, Oh, I've <laughs> been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared to the closet. Whoa. Yummy, yummy! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. You wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know the festival is coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons, markers, and glue sticks. Oh, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Yummy to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? Okay! 
Ready, Yummy? Yep, let's go. Whoa. You guys, my throat is like hurting. So much talking. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. Hee hee hee. Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well... Everyone's gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah. That sounds... kind of dull. Yummy! You're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like... You say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final, jo the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that. <laughs> Sayori, uh, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know? I know, I know. I just meant that it's a pretty unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess it means that I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Ah, I'm so excited! The festival is gonna be so much fun! Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Yummy, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, huh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from this, the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight into the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! Sayori pulls a box of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sayori starts putting various crayons out of- Pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find- Wait! I'm looking for my favorite color! Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Oh my god. Kia! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. <laughs> She falls to the floor, and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow! You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts! Just do it for a second. Oh my god. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Yummy! Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink will do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Oh, uh, okay. Uh-oh. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out to the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter, so it'll be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm, ready, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. 
It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it, you'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, yummy. This kind of reminds me- reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Huh? What do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways, like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I try to do things- when- wait, what? <laughs> but sometimes when I try to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump, and I would start crying really hard. And you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you had blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay attention enough attention to you. So, in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your, your head. Yummy. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that! And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Yummy, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling well, where we'll end up... We'll each end up for college, or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises, but... Well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. <laughs> not if I hide it under my bangs. Oh my god. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ugh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bum, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back! Good timing. I was just about ready to start sharing our poems. Uh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. <laughs> well, anyway. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right... Eh? Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Yummy. Ah, well, Sayori... I failed to come up with an, with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. Okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Oh my god, we're gonna have to do this again! <laughs> Dude, this game's so long! I didn't know this game was gonna be so long! What the heck? Let's go with, uh, Monica this time. Hi again, Yummy. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know! Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright! It's pretty good! It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. 
You two are like the dynamic duo. Haha, <laughs> that's kind of exaggerating it. Uh. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. Uh, I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time for to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them a share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors. They won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise. It won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless... Load me? Load me? What it... Huh? Hmm... It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ha ha ha... I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Okay, maybe I should save. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh, let's go with Natsuki. I always want to save Yuri for last. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one, but I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew, what? Ah, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. He hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Haha! <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so... Uh, fluffy... Spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? <laughs> there are people in this chat who call me... Who call me Amy Woo. <laughs> You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. 
But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. At one time, I hurt my leg really bad. Oh, sorry. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps to realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to, re to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. No one cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. Wait, oh, sorry, who cares? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. That's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, uh, so look forward to it. Lots of reading, you guys. Okay, Sayori's next. Yummy. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Huh? I'm not hiding anything. But... Your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one's too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Huh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well... I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? Eh? Wah, wah, wah! <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. Hee hee hee. So, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can f through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, yummy. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because... Well... It's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> Sayori, you completely misunderstood. Why well, didn't- I didn't write this for you. Hee hee hee. Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. Uh, I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Ah! I broke my pencil! Sayori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. Oh my lord. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. So sorry It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. Uh, I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Y yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry. I forgot about that. 
But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the, sh on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a, a dark cave, discovering secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against the, the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap! Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I guess I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! It's magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Oh. Haha, <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times? But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Oh my god, the last one is Yuri! I'm excited. Let's see what you've written for today. Oh my Jesus. Why is she cute though? Like... Hello? She has purple hair? She got purple eyes? Okay. Hmm. <laughs> well done, Yummy. Your skills are already improving. <laughs> purple hair master race! Tanner Montana, thank you so much for the 513 sub. I really appreciate it. I guess everyone in the chat is a uh, Yuri gang. I, I now understand what Yuri Gang means, so... Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Yeah, coming from the hottest one, that means a lot. It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire our fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your, your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise, I see. That's certainly interesting. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. Best handwriting, the raccoon. 
It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back from warm. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The moon, the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish, I don't know what that is, my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood, classic pal Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Ah, uh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for being a strange interest? Huh? She... She did? She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... She's right! Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. Well... That's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. Don't worry, you have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Ugh, I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad you're a good listener. Wow! Okay, maybe we can wrap this day up in... in Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room... Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with that last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? Keep it simple casual, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But doesn't- that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're gonna be performing. Performing? P uh, Monica. Yeah! We're gonna be having a poetry performance. Each of us are gonna choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also gonna let every- anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's so putting it all on the posters in case anybody wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee hee hee! Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't- you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. 
There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anybody until just a couple days ago. It's a lot uh, to ask... It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. Oops. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it'll inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And those reasons... Uh, it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Oh my god. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. Ha! <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to, he to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Are they really just gonna be practicing this? Oh my god. Okay. I know this is a little bit abrupt. My voice kind of hurts a little bit and before I get into anything too crazy, I feel like this is like now another segment of the story. So I'm probably gonna end it here. Um, thank you everybody who made it to the end of this video. I really appreciate you for watching it. Please smash that like button. Uh, and let me know if you would like to see more of these Doki Doki playthroughs. Um, I'm excited to see what's to come. I just wish that the buildup wasn't so slow. Because I've been playing for like two hours and I feel like nothing's happened yet. But hey, character development, right? Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all later. Bye. Oh, wait, hold on. Go to plushag.com, buy a pin. Okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>